Hello everyone, this is Jan Chromi and together we will continue the course Interdisciplinary Approaches to Language and its Use. In this presentation we will focus on animals and their linguistic abilities. What is clear is that animals do indeed communicate. For the purposes of communication they use various signals. There are many modes which animals may use. Some species use visual mode. They can change their color or they can use facial expressions such as tooth barring. Other animals use auditory mode. We all know that frogs croak and birds sing. And there are also other modes which may be employed for communication such as touch, olfaction and so on. However, none of these communication systems is as elaborate and complex as human language. Animal communication is a tremendously interesting field of study and we do not have time to go into details here. What is of interest to us now is whether animals can actually acquire a human language if we train them. For example, if a chimpanzee would be able to learn a full-fledged sign language, the idea of language innateness would be quite undermined. Another question we may ask is whether animals have any abilities which we consider as necessary for language learning. In case these animals would not be able to learn a full-fledged language, but would have some abilities necessary to learn a language, then we can say that these abilities are not specific for a language as such. We will begin with a species you may know, but you probably do not consider it as a promising candidate for language learning, and this is Chinchilla. In the 1970s, Patricia Kuhl and James Miller showed that Chinchillas are able to learn phonemic contrasts such as T and D, and they can acquire the same phonetic boundaries between these phonemes as native adult speakers of English. Importantly, newborns have the same ability as we will say next week. From this point of view, chinchillas are not different from babies just after birth. An obvious candidate for language learning is a parrot. The reason for this is that parrots are quite successful in speech mimicking. You may even know some parrots who are quite talkative. However, the mimicking ability does not necessarily lead to the ability to learn language. So let's see what the parrots can do. An interesting example may be Alex the parrot, who was studied by Irene Pepperberg. If you are interested, you may have a look at her book The Alex Studies, or you may search YouTube for videos of Alex. There are quite a few of them there. As you may expect, Alex was not really able to learn a full-fledged human language. However, his abilities were remarkable. His vocabulary listed about 100 words. He was able to count to six. He distinguished various colors and understood concepts such as bigger, smaller, same, different, and so on. This would be obviously little for a human, but for an animal, this is quite unexpectedly lot. As I already said, he did not acquire language as such, but he acquired a bidirectional code, which he used for successful communication. Now let's turn our attention to chimpanzees, who are genetically very close to humans. According to certain estimates, we share around 98% of our genome with chimpanzees. Therefore, we might predict that we probably share a lot of innate capacities with them. Obviously, chimpanzees do not have vocal tracts which would allow them to speak. However, they may be able to learn a sign language. Sign languages are natural languages such as English or Czech, and they have all definitional features of a language. If chimpanzees would be able to learn such a language, it would be a very important fact for our understanding of human language. There have been several chimpanzees who have been trained to acquire a sign language. Probably the most promising one was Vesho. She was able to use around 350 signs from American Sign Language, 
and she even created some signs herself. Also, she was able to learn signs indirectly, just by seeing them in use in her environment. And she was also using the American Sign Language in communication with other chimpanzees. For example, she taught her adopted son Lulis to sign. Another well-known chimpanzee who was learning American Sign Language was Nim Chimpsky. He knew about 125 signs, but there has been no evidence that he was able to combine them into new meanings, which is a key property of human language. Herbert Terris and his colleagues thus claimed that apes can learn many isolated symbols, such as words or signs, but they show no unequivocal evidence of mastering the conversational, semantic or syntactic organization of language. The last animal species we will discuss here are gorillas. It is also possible to train them to use signs. However, they are manually less skilled than chimpanzees. The reason why we are talking about gorillas here is Coco, who was trained to learn American Sign Language and who developed quite interesting abilities. She learned more than 1000 signs and she understood more than 2000 spoken words. She was able to use signs to communicate about objects which were not present in the given situation. Similarly to Vesho, she created new signs. However, her communication employed no syntax or grammar at all. If you're interested in Coco, you may also look uh, into YouTube where there are many videos with her. From the few examples we briefly overviewed in this presentation, we may conclude that animals do not possess sufficient abilities to learn a full-fledged language. Primarily, they cannot really acquire and use grammar. On the other hand, at least some animal species can learn and use various things that are necessary for language acquisition. For example, they may be able to learn hundreds of words or signs. They may discriminate sounds of a language in the same way as adult native speakers do, and so on. Before we will end this presentation, I have one reading tip for you. In case you are interested in animal communication from a linguistic point of view, you may want to read Stephen Anderson's book, Dr. Doolittle's Delusion, Animals and the Uniqueness of Human Language. That is all from me now. See you next time.